My name is Heather Choate Davis, and I am the writer of all the songs on the album, Life in the Key of God. I had just started hearing songs, and it's not unusual for a writer. I've been a writer all my life in so many different forms. And so you're used to hearing little snippets of a phrase or an idea, um, but this is the first time things started coming with full melodies and choruses. But I'm not a musician, I'm not a singer, I'm not trained in any instrument, I didn't, couldn't read music, I couldn't write music. How am I gonna do this? And then it came to me, it's gonna be an album and each song is gonna be brought to life by a different dear friend. So Heather called me out of the blue in the beginning of the pandemic. She called me to tell me that she was writing songs and that she was making an album. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, Heather, wow. So for each person, there was a reason. Um, something about the way they sang, something about that we had discussed before that I knew it would speak to their heart, something about the quality of their faith that I knew would come alive with a certain kind of teaching or the language of the song. Um, so it was not just me deciding, it was, it was a God thing deciding who would sing each song. Heather came in and said she was going to start studying piano, taking piano lessons. And I was like, cool, that's going to be great. And then it seemed like six months later, she said, yo, I'm writing some songs and uh, I'd like to put an album together. Great. And then about a few months later, she came uh, to Hope LA one Sunday morning and said, hey, I'd like to play this song for you. It's the first song off the album. And uh, I was blown away. And I was like, yo, this is great. I've read a lot of Heather's books. I knew she was a brilliant writer. I had no idea that she was musical at all. I'm not sure she knew that until she started taking lessons, but she is absolutely musical. Her, her lyrics, her m melodies. She was telling me about uh, taking composition uh, lessons and learning how to play piano, but I had no idea she was such a gifted composer. When she first reached out to me and asked me to um, to do this, I was actually surprised. And then she comes out with, oh, by the way, there's a song that I wrote called Adelante, and I would like you and Ernie to sing it and make it yours. And I'm like, <gasps> And she had a sheet of music uh, with her, and she said, she, I wrote some songs. and. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know she wrote music, uh, so I, I, I was shocked. <laughs> but uh, it was—I was really surprised. It, it, it had uh, quite a quality to it, and uh, yeah, she kind of blew me away right there. When Heather first reached out to me about uh, recording this song, I was honored to be on the album. But it was kind of neat because I'd. Uh, been able to walk with her through the process of writing this particular song. Anytime you take um, what someone else has done or their work, they have a vision for it. And I know her and I knew that she would have um, an idea behind um, the words and thoughts and picture and music she'd already begun to create. And so I took it, of course, very seriously, um, wanting to hopefully be able to honor her and honor um, her heart and um, all of her beautiful thoughts. You know, each song is its own special little offering and different songs will speak differently to different people. But I think the one thing that they all have in common is that they reflect the very heart of God. And um, immediately when I got it, I sat down at the piano and kind of played it through. Um, I was struck uh, by just the prayer, prayerfulness, I guess. I was really down about all the COVID stuff. I've been home and all my concerts were canceled. And um, I realized that Heather's song, Morning Song, was kind of becoming a meditation for me. When I was preparing to sing the song, I took a few moments to... Um, meditate with the words, to chew on the words, to let the words sink in, and let those words, let that prayer become my prayer. What I hope for people, whether it's someone who is in church every week or someone who would rather be anywhere but church every week, I hope that um, when they hear it, that they will feel something 
words. And sense something and maybe know something they didn't know before about the nature of God. Maybe ask themselves, you know, hmm, is there more, is there more to Christianity maybe than I thought? I would like someone to hear a song and feel as if they are being healed and loved and encouraged in a way that um, passes all human understanding. It carries a much needed message of hope and um, togetherness in these times of isolation and discouragement. We are stronger together. Her music just makes me feel hopeful. Um, and if anything is talking about something that's just bigger than us. I don't think these uh, songs are, you know, locked into a, a religious setting at all. I think they're more spiritual and they're, again, for me, stories. I was so glad that, you know, at this stage in her life, where she didn't grow up doing church music, you know, in her teens, as, as far as professional music, I thought if you didn't figure out piano or something by the time you were 12, you're out of, out of commission. So that's been pretty inspirational to see that, you know, you really can. You can uh, commit to something, and at least some extraordinary people can. When the Holy Spirit moves, Heather says yes, whether it be in her books or now in the music that she's writing, that I have no doubt that those who hear these songs will be moved and deeply inspired as well. I hope they would hear the songs and know that God isn't far away, that He's right here. You can hear Him and know Him, and you're invited to speak to Him through this music. The quaking of His power in my life and cry out.